Hello and welcome to this Repfer video. Today we're going to be converting the Sony Watchman into an AV composite test machine so it can be used to test old classic consoles and any device that you want to test an AV or composite connection. Due to the portability of the item, it makes it a perfect companion to take with you when going to buy classic consoles. If you want to check the output on them, this is ideal. You can take it with you to a gaming expo and you can test the console there and then, just in case the seller doesn't have a TV to show you it working. Most of the information I've found to do this is on the internet and also I've used the service manual diagrams to help. So over to the task in hand, I've just shown it working. Obviously you can't get any signal because it's an analog receiver and we don't receive analog here. So now we've taken the batteries out and then there's just three screws to take the case apart. Now that the three screws are removed, you can lift the back of the cover off and you can see the circuit boards. Here I'm just trying to look to see where I can put an additional switch in, which we'll come to later. So now we need to remove this single screw and then we need to get the soldering iron out and then unsolder it. It's soldered to the board halfway down. This needs to be removed so we can lift it up and get to the bits we need to. First of all, we just need to remove this plug so we can separate the two circuit boards. And now to unsolder this small section. Just carefully bend it back and then the areas that need to be worked on can be exposed. This will need to be refitted afterwards so just go carefully, don't snap it off. We now need to lift two pins on this chip, number 13 and number 18. So I'm going to do number 18 first. So if you're counting from where I'm looking at, at the top right of the picture, that's number 13. And then you work across to the left and you'll get to number 18. So if you're looking at the screen now, number 13 is the top right on the chip. So rather stupidly, I decided to use my Milwaukee soldering iron on this, which is way too bulky for doing something like this. It was more over me being lazy than anything. I just couldn't bother to get the other one out. But ideally, you want something smaller, a bit more delicate to do some of the smaller soldering tasks than this. I did manage to do it with it, but it wasn't ideal. So here I'm just getting the AV wires prepped to fit. You'll see that I prep all three of them, but I don't need three. I realized afterwards I only needed one audio connection and one video connection. So I will we'll remove the red one, but you'll see me putting it in to start with, but I'll take it out after. So now that the cables are all prepped, I'm now gonna remove the old cord off of the Watchman. This used to serve as the aerial for the TV. I'm then gonna feed the new cables through that gap and then use that as an outlet for the cables. Here I'm just joining all the earth cables together, getting ready to solder them on, and then they're going to be soldered onto the board just in an earth position. There's a solder point on the side of this silver shield, which I'm just going to solder it to. Now it's time to get the yellow wire prepped, ready to solder that onto the board. And then the wire can be soldered to the board. This has got to go in the via position, which I'll show a close up of just so you can see better. So you can see here where I'm pointing that the area is very small that it's got to be soldered to. Now we can look at soldering the white wire on. This has to be soldered onto R213 resistor, which I'll show a close up in a minute just so you can see where it is. So also going back to the chip, pin 13 needs to be lifted, which will then correspond with this because it's the audio part of the system. Here you can just see where the white wire is soldered onto the resistor. We can now also lift pin 13 on the chip and lift that from the board. So again, pin 13 is the top right as you're looking at it from here. We can also bend back down the metal shield piece and solder that back in place. Just make sure when you do bend it back down that it's not touching any components from where it's been bent up. So now if you turn the circuit board over, you'll see there's another chip. We need to lift pin 8 on this one. Now if you look closely at the board around the chip, you'll see that they're numbered, so it makes it a lot easier to find number 8. So we do this to remove the tuning line from the screen. Obviously we don't need this, now we're not using it for an analog TV receiver. So now that that's done, we need to remove the front circuit board that has the screen in. We have to remove a resistor on this board and then put a switch in. This is purely so you can switch between 50Hz and 60Hz. Obviously that gives you more versatility for checking different systems from different regions. So you'll see there that I just use a soldering iron to remove the solder that holds the shield in place and now I'm using a soldering iron with some tweezers to remove the resistor. The resistor is R425. So now that the resistor's removed, now I can fit two wires either side of where the resistor was and then we can connect that to a switch. The wires can be routed to the side of the circuit panel and it needs to come out behind. I'm going to be putting the switch on the rear plastic part so it can be switched on and off easily. I can then put the metal shield back on and solder that in place. 
So it's at this point I realise I don't need the red wire, so I'm just going to remove that now. So at this point now we can start putting the parts back together. So the first thing we need to do is put the circuit boards back in. And now to screw this single part back down. So I decided the best place to put the switch is on the rear panel. I found a nice little location to put this little micro switch that I've bought. The switches actually are ideal for this. Um, quality wise they're not the best but they're ideal, they were cheap and they'll be perfect for this just to switch it between 50 and 60 hertz. Here I'm just soldering the small micro switch to the wires just before I glue that in place. So now that the switch is glued in, I just used a bit more super glue around the edges and then just sprinkled a bit of bicarbonate of soda on there. This just makes the super glue off quicker and it adds a nice hard bond around the surfaces. The cable clamp and grommet can now go back on on the rear shell. I'm just applying a little bit more super glue in this area just to hold the cable in place in case it gets pulled on. And now both the shells can be put back together and screwed down. Now we can get the batteries put in and just see whether it switches on. So that's a good start, let's test it on a console. So as you can see the mod turned out really well. The screen obviously isn't the best quality screen but it's ideal for testing sound and output of a console. I know some people might think this is pointless but I expect there will be some people that find this useful. So if you wanted to do a mod just to accept an RF signal, something similar to like a Master System or Mega Drive original RF lead, that's a lot easier to do. You could just modify the original aero lead with a coax cable. I probably will buy another one of these and just do that and show that on a separate video. As always, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.